Well, I've been asked to get around to some testing of uh, some portable coffee making devices. I had a hand grinder, well, I had a, an electric grinder with a light. I had uh, an electric grinder with a coffee maker similar to this, but it had. Um, yeah, I took it apart a bit and I, I didn't like what was inside. Um, I've had a sort of travel cup with a cafeteria within it which with which you would have to have your coffee ground already which means carrying a grinder and a travel cup and I had this now I didn't hold out a lot of hope for any of them to be honest but this uh, was the only one that I have actually used quite a few times it's it's got a, a, a lid here this is the travel cup lid it's just stored there I'll, I'll remove that for now this undoing it Right, reveals a, an insulated twin wall steel mug, which I will say I would imagine is too large for most car cup holders. Um, but it is at least vacuum insulated. This cover here is covering the grinder mechanism, so I'll just put that there for now. Get the steam on. And this is your grinder and filter. And the idea of it is that you, and it's a USB chargeable, it's got rechargeable batteries. You crack it open like that, just a quick turn and lift, and there's your gr grinder mechanism, and here's your motor unit. The filter shows the grinder, ceramic grinder burrs underneath. Uh, we'll put that back. You can pop it on there. You get 18 grams of coffee. Now, um, I can weigh this coffee, but uh, if you don't have scales, it's not an exact science, but I'm going to weigh 18 grams in. Do that quickly now. Uh, a moment. Okay. There we go. Oh, almost 18 grams. And what I'm going to do now is tip the coffee into here. And I don't know whether I'll end up editing this. But. And now all I have to do is press the button because it's actually it will run unattended and it will grind until all the coffee's ground away and it will turn off automatically. Which is quite nice because it takes a while to grind. And of course, you don't want to sit here waiting for it to finish grinding, holding the button, because that would get old pretty quickly. And uh, I can't remember on one charge, I think over a week, I used it five or six times on just one charge, it was still grinding. I don't know, I think it would grind at least five times, six times on one USB charge. And what we'll do, we'll leave it to keep grinding. I rest it on the grind cup. I didn't initially because I thought, oh, I'm worried grinds will fall out. But that mesh is really fine and the grinds don't fall out of it. Now, one of the things as well is the mesh is so fine that the cup, even though this probably isn't a fantastic grinder, the cup is very clean, there's just no fines in the cup whatsoever, really, really clean. And you need to grind it quite coarse because the filter holds the water back. Probably a good thing because it gives you some brew time, some reasonable brew time. This, in effect, um, becomes not really useful for anything because once this is grinding and ground and you've made your coffee, you would just lift that away and screw this on the mug. Uh, so this piece is just really storage. Well, no, so it takes about uh, three minutes to grind. It's not too bad. I mean, it's better than turning a handle uh, for a minute or two. And at least you don't have to 
sit there with a the button hole. It charges by USB here. The charging light comes on and goes off when it's charged. I don't even know who makes it. I've absolutely no idea who makes this. Um, I've no idea how much it will be. And I've no idea if it will even be sold by the retailer who asked me to have a look at it, which was Bella Barista. I've absolutely no idea. They just sent me a big box full of things and just said, have a play, which I've been doing. But that was, that was months ago. It took me a while to get round to even stumping up the energy to play with. And they can hear the change in tone. It's finished grinding and it's switched off. Now, what I've got now is a cup, which doesn't have anything in it. Um, the gauze, which contains the coffee, and a couple of arms. Now, uh, I'll show you what happens. You can move the arms out here, like that, and like that. This is all quite clever. And that means the gauze will now pull down. Let's see if I keep it in frame. It's difficult when I'm trying to keep it on video. And I'll just put that there for now. And as you can see, there's the ground coffee. Pops on there, and then we can go and pop water in it. So uh, that all works quite easy. I'll just pause the video for that. Right, because I don't have a kettle of starch, I've had to just draw some hot water into a flask. And the idea is you can pour it over the grounds. Let's leave it to set a bit. Now, I had changed the gri grind and made it even coarser um, before this video because it's been running very very slow and I thought well I'll go even coarser this sort of really is fine but it does give an amazingly clean cut and I found uh, a little trick if I can find them is uh, I've got some little here we go That's some old cream tops I just pop those on and it seems to keep the heat in uh, better. The reason I, I haven't used it is for the video, but uh, yeah, it just sort of keeps the heat in. And then you basically just keep topping it up, and it percolates out. Here, as you can see, drips out, and makes your coffee. Um, you can experiment with how fine you want it. I mean, you could go finer if you want to have a slightly longer brew time. Um, for me, I. Th I'm hoping this will be about right for what I like to do. I mean, what I think is a shame is that uh, if I take the grinder apart, is uh, they didn't really make this design to actually sit on and cover the gap. Obviously, you can sit that on. It just would have been quite smart. Had they made it so it would have some way sat over and covered everything up. Now I have tried the travel mug lid and put it on. And yes, if you, if you put it on and turn it upside down, even though, you know, cheaply made, it doesn't actually really leak. It would certainly survive a knockover and it does keep it very warm. I just don't like drinking from sipper cups, which is quite nice. So you get a reasonably thin rim where they tape the rim that makes it reasonably pleasant to drink out of. Now, the only other disadvantage, of course, is you have to look at the gap there to see what level the coffee is or lift this out slightly because uh, there's no cutout, but obviously there can't be because it's vacuum insulated. So anyway, uh, let's keep pouring. And pretty much, you've got a coffee, something I guess you could take camping. You could take it to the office and use it on your desk, I suppose. So I don't know if I would, but I um, guess you could. Certainly when traveling, uh, had I had something like this in some of the hotels I've been in, where you get a kettle and uh, you, you want to just pull something out of your bag that can actually grind beans and make decent coffee, that with the mug and everything, all in one, that you can drink it, uh, just carrying one thing about, I guess this would be great if you were travelling. Um, and if I was still travelling as part of my job, um, going on holiday, would I pack this in the case? Yes, it doesn't weigh a huge amount, perhaps 
I don't know. I, I could try and weigh it. I might try and weigh it. But say under a kilo, I mean, we're talking probably 700 grams. Uh, we're coming almost to the end of the coffee being made. And really, as I say, it's a very, very clean cup indeed. The, the other thing that I think in these for use in, say, a car is that if, if you're thinking, oh, I could use this in a car and put the lid on and keep the drink hot for hours. You can, but you still have to put your cream and your sugar and whatever else in, whatever else you have in your coffee. Um, this is a long drink, so I'm going to put a sweetener in now. So I have a sweetener in my coffee. And I, I just find it, it comfortably holds sort of 275 mil. It doesn't really hold much more than that. I'm probably brewing... Uh, just over 250 mil at the moment and I might stop the brew soon um, washing out the filters fairly easy um, that's not hard uh, what I tend to do is take the filter out let it drain and then I knock it out into the bin and then, and then wash it out now one of the things of course is this is your holder for the grinder mechanism and the grinder if it's very tempting to sit there and put the filter in here and let it drain out but if you do that then you've got to dry this before you've got to dry it in there before screwing the grinder um screwing it back onto the grinder motor which that top is the electronics and motor housing of the grinder and you don't really want that damp screwed back in there so you're going to need some sort of dish or some sort of place to to put this, um, you could start, it's not, and, and it's pointy, yeah? So it's not, this isn't really made for standing, no, which is a shame. So people are going to be tempted to stand this in there, but then of course it's all moist for the motor housing, so I'm not sure how good an idea that would be. What I'm going to do, because I can, is carry it to the sink. Um, one of these old plastic lids. There we go. And I just stand it in an old cup and let it drain out. Now what I've got here is a perfectly acceptable brew of coffee. It's um, The walls are cool because it's a vacuum uh, cup, which means my coffee stays warm for a while. I'm going to put a bit of cream in it because... Uh, so I have my coffee now, I have to, or, or espresso, and give it a stir, a little bit more, there we go. And now I have a nice cup of brewed coffee. This is the filter which has been draining just for a few minutes, um, and all I need to do now is knock out the worst of it. It comes out pretty clean. Give it a quick rinse under the tap. And this is the cup with the travel mug lid screwed on. And like with all lids you just fold that back. It clips out the way and you just drink it out the sipper hole.